Hi everybody. This is a first in a series of videos meant to elucidate further on the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups that we covered this week. And this video is just going to be about a, a very simple proposition, but a very useful one, which says if we start with two positive integers, m and n, which are relatively prime, and that's key, and we look at the cyclic group of order m times n, then that should be isomorphic to the cyclic group of order m cross the cyclic group of order n. So, for example, let's say you had um, 2 times 3, and you looked at a cyclic group of order 6. That should be isomorphic to C2 cross C3. On the other hand, if you don't have relative primeness, so say you take 2 times 2, and you look at a cyclic group of order 4, that's not going to be isomorphic to C2 cross C2. All right, so let's get to the proof. Well, if we want to show an isomorphism between two groups, well, we can simply create a map, which is an isomorphism. So, first, let's give some uh, names to the generators of these three groups. So we'll let CMN be generated by an element, say, X, which has order MN. CM can be generated by, say, Y. And CN can be generated by Z. So we now want to define a map. And say we can call it F. <coughs> from CMN to CM cross CN. Since we're trying eventually to get F to be a homomorphism, we know we only have to define it on a generator for the cyclic group of order MN, and then show that the image of uh, F on that generator satisfies the same relations as there is on the generator, namely that in this case X to the MN is the identity element. So I only have to define it on the generator, which is X, and the place I'm going to send it, well, it's going to go to a pair, and I have to take an element from here and an element from here, and, well, I'm just going to send it to the generators. So I'll send it to y, comma, z. Okay, and so then to make sure that this is a homomorphism, we're going to check whether or not f of x raised to the m times n is equal to the identity element. So f of x raised to the m times n will be y, z raised to the m times n. We do it component by component, we get y to the mn comma z to the mn. And since y is a generator for cyclic group of order m, we know that y has order m. So y to the m will be the identity. And similarly, since z has order n, z to the mn, the same as z to the n to the m, will also be the identity. So this immediately tells us, since f applied to the generator satisfies the same relation as the generator, we know f is going to be a homomorphism. All right, now how do we get that it's an isomorphism? Well, we're going to need that, uh, for instance, uh, the image of f uh, is going to be all of cm cross cn. Then f would be onto. And since these are finite sets with the same size, we'll have an isomorphism. So, well, let's take a look. We already know that y comma z is in the image. But what's the order of y comma z? Well, we already know that m times n is a multiple of the order, because y comma z to the mn is the identity. Well, let's see if this is the smallest one. Let's check y z to the, uh, say, the ith power. So we know this will be y to the i comma z to the i. Now, if this was equal to the identity element, then that would tell you that y to the i is the identity, and z to the i is the identity. And this automatically tells you that i is a multiple of the order of y. The order of y was m, so i is a multiple of m. On the other hand, z to the i is the identity, so i is a multiple of n. So i is a multiple of both m and n. Well, that means it's a multiple of mn, because m and n are relatively prime. So since m and n are relatively prime, i is greater than or equal to mn. In fact, it's a multiple of it. But all we need is that it's greater than or equal to, because this tells us mn is actually the order of y comma z. So every power of y comma z is in the image of the uh, the image of the map f, and we're getting m times n elements 
in the subgroup generated by yz. But this group has m times n elements. So this actually is a generator for cm cross cn. So this tells you f is not only a homomorphism, but an isomorphism. And that completes the proof. <laughs>